Welcome to DaVinci Resolve Tips and Tricks. In this episode, I will be sharing a density DCTL for free. First of all, if you want to understand more about saturation, I have a whole other video that goes in depth on all the different ways and methods that you can tackle saturation within DaVinci Resolve. In this video, I'm gonna share this DCTL for free that you can find in the link below in my shop. But first, a disclaimer, this is not developed by me. I believe it was developed by Paul Dore a few years ago. So what's a DCTL? DCTL is short for DaVinci Color Transform Language. It's a scripting language used to create custom color transformations and effects in DaVinci Resolve. So basically DCTL enables users to write custom code and manipulate color information at a pixel level for very precise adjustments. So in this case, I'm sharing density. I explained in the video that I said what density is, but long story short, the lowering of color luminance creates perceptual richness of colors, and that's called density, pretty much. So if you grab this vanilla saturation knob, you know, I'm pushing such saturation, everything is getting saturated. You can see this red hair, it's getting more saturated, but as it's getting saturated, it's getting brighter. So density is a subtractive method and it's completely the opposite. It will get darker as you saturate the colors. To show you what I'm doing, I'm using my fixed node tree that I use in every single project. So, you know, it's divided. It, it's meant to be worked um, by groups. It is the way I worked. So you have the instance of IDTs, um, everything you can need. We have this my fixed node tree at, at a clip level. In this case, I'm not doing it all. I'm doing a bit of exposure. Um, this, everything is S log three. I shoot usually to the right. You can tell here, so I'm lowering and hiding a bit of noise, reducing a bit of contrast. I'm balancing this hugely um, because obviously we're down in the tube, there's mixed light, there was natural light coming from up here. This, uh, sodium lights are and these lights inside the tube everything is completely different but I'm not doing anything crazy here just with the offset and a little bit of gain I'm just cooling down things and then I, we jump straight into my timeline level so all these goodies I'm offer within my fixed node tree apart from the LUT that I sell them as a different package so if you buy the LUT as well you can use them straight away here and it's, it's just a compound node that contains all my LUTs and in this case, I'm using number 11, Joginton, um, to give it a bit of a vibe, a uh, bit of highlight roll off. You can see here in these tubes here, how it's compressing them a little bit. Uh, a bit of halation, you can really, let me zoom in here. Yeah, you can see there how it's adding a bit of halation in these tubes here as well. Um, it's quite subtle and that's how I like it, a bit of subtlety not too much. Um, so I'm adding a lot of my taste, an extra contrast curve that I'm offering a whole pack for free. They can download for free on my shop. Um, these are split tones. Again, I'm selling a whole pack of however many, I don't know, 40 split tones on my fixed node tree, uh, I built in four. Um, but if you want to buy the add-ons, how many split tones am I? Wow. Quite a lot, quite a lot I'm selling. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm using this case The Let me get this a bit bigger so you can see it a tiny bit better. I'm using this, the winter one, just to cool things down a little bit. You can see here on the vector scope, everything tends to be going up in between the cyans and the blues. In my fixed node tree, I offer these four different built-in magic color presets. I offer a density one that creates some really nice density. But what I'm showing here today, it's slightly different. Um, in later examples, I'm going to compare them and so you can see how they react. So for the sake of having the density in the same place, I'm going to create a serial next to a parallel. I call it dense DCTL. And first thing, how, how to load the DCTL. Well, DCTL goes into the, if you come here, uh, do, 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 open LAT folder. You have a bunch of LUTs and you have this folder called DCTL and I have a bunch of DCTLs and you can just drag it here and and yeah, so you you it's not like the LUTs that you can update the list and save, you have to restart DaVinci and then it comes as an OFX, let me type DCTL. Um, unfortunately, this is only for the studio, the paid version. So if you don't have a paid version, you won't find this effect. Sorry. 
So yeah, you just drag and drop it, it's this one, film density. And this is how it looks, very, very simple and intuitive. By default, it doesn't do anything until you start pushing some sliders. So I'm gonna quickly compare it with the one I built here, which is, let's open, this is by default how I have it, it's just sort of a, a medium range density level. But yeah, basically I'm using two different models. I'm not gonna get into this too much. Again, I have a whole saturation video that explains this. Um, I'm basically, let me reset this with gamma and I put it here, HSP gamma. With gamma, I'm saturating, I'm pushing the cost. I'm gonna go crazy, but, but you, you can see the difference. You know, this is horrible, but you can see in the red how it's getting more robust rather than just pushing the vanilla saturation that is all the opposite, it's getting thinner, it's getting brighter, yeah? So I'm, and just to create a nice dense look, I'm gonna push the gamma just a little bit and it becomes denser. And with, with HSL, the gain will, I'm gonna push it back to desaturate, but at the same time, create density. Yeah, so we're going from, let me come out, out of here. So we're creating this level of density. You can see in the reds how it's getting, you know, darker, but more robust as a color rather than saturated and brighter. So you can play with that. That comes built into my uh, fixed knowledge tree and I explain how to do it in my saturation uh, video. Um, this one is pretty simple. You have a slider, you have an overall film density, so you can push. You can see how quickly those rates are getting so robust. And these three, the, the ways, uh, they work more or less, I'm gonna explain later, as um, a three by three matrix of some sort. So in, in this image, if you press Shift F, the viewer becomes bigger, but you can still see here the this is the, the effect. So you can see much better what, how this image is reacting to density in this TL. So let me, again, not go mental, let's go half half the way before and after you can see all the colors you know the red how it's getting deeper the green hair is quite luminous and it's becoming quite deeper there's, there's a lot of green hair let me let me show you, you know if yeah i'm sort of reducing the the weight on on the greens but the reds are becoming dense you can see before just look here and after but I'm touching the greens, not the reds. Just imagine if I push the reds even more denser. Yeah, this is, wow, this, this, this is amazing. I mean, this looks lovely. Maybe this is getting a bit too, too dark, but this red is just beautiful. It's a really, really nice, uh, filmy looking red. But yeah, just, just play with it. And, and the blue, see the blue here? I'm looking at this blue here. So this is by default in the middle. We can go deeper but it also affects the greens. They are becoming a bit brighter. Um, the less blue, the more green it becomes darker. So yeah, you need to strike sort of a balance. I recommend start in the middle, just use the density, the overall density. And then if you're not happy with certain things, start one by one um, moving these slides until you reach your desired outcome. So let's go into the second image. And we have this beautiful presenter here. Let's stop around there where she's a bit sharper in the face. Let's go full blast in this one. We can see, you know, in her face, the reds are getting, she, she has a really nice, lovely golden tones. And we're going just too dark. But I like what it's doing to the greens. You know how all these greens are getting way deeper and more defined. So let's open up the red, maybe in full before and after, still getting darker, but really nice. Um, now let's push the greens a little bit more to, to the dark. And let's see what the blue does. Probably not so much. Yeah, I prefer it a bit darker. Yeah, so, you know, this is what density is giving us. Um, let's go to our third image, which is, let me go Shift F, let me reload this. So this is sort of, I'm gonna, I may always find that two is maybe too much. I always tend to leave it at one and then play with the sliders. Probably less red because her lips and, and the skin, again, is becoming quite dark. Maybe up the green, see what that does. It doesn't do much. It, uh, 
looking here at the sofa. So it's mostly affecting, yeah, it's a little bit on the skin, but not too much, it's mostly there. I'm gonna leave it there. Um, blues, quite a lot of cyan blue. Okay, so it's making, as I push it, the, the blues is pushing the, the blues here at the back, before and after. Um, yeah, and I, so I like, let me just push it back here. I like what, what it's doing. For like example, now the colors, um, the fourth image, this one. I wanted to show you something here. My, let me come out of this and reload and disable. So let's come to the original density here and I can show you something if you found this problem um, your end. Look, look here. Yeah, again, it's becoming quite noisy. And that is uh, due to the HSV gamma. So what I recommend when images are this noisy and as soon as you push the HSV gamma, it becomes noisy, you know, you can see here. So rather than using the gamma, I will suggest using the gain. So you can see I'm pushing it very hard. I mean, that's over the top. Um, and it's not causing the same thing that the gamma, see? It's causing here, which is just breaking the image. It's not very nice. So in this case, I would suggest using the gain. And the gain, again, HSL to reduce and make those reds even deeper. Well, this, the whole colors even deeper. And in this case, I'm looking at the reds here because, of course, the reds just, um, well, not there. I mean, here, um, they yeah, just catch your attention. <laughs> um, yeah, so that uh, that's sort of a fix if you find that my built-in uh, density, my not fixed null tree is causing some certain shots, not all, some chatter and noise. Uh, then you can change the gamma on the HSV uh, for the gain. And and just just for you to remember, I'm gonna add another note here and just push the saturation. See, see how what you know? It's I'm go, yeah, I'm going too far, right? But again, it's, yeah, it's making everything very saturated, very additive, very digital. Um, you may want to go for this look because, you know, it's very vibrant. It's over the top vibrant. Um, but it, you know, how it looks completely different. How, you know, how the colors are becoming brighter as you push saturation opposed to darker, which is the sought after idea for a filmic um, cinematic, that stupid word, um, image. So now let's see what the DCTL does to this image. Um, it doesn't, I'm going to push it hard. It doesn't create, you yeah, know, the, the awful chatter that I was creating before. It's not the cleanest either. Um, but you know, just, you can see just this image needs a bit of here in the darks, a bit of noise reduction, which, um, I have applied when I edited, when I graded this project, but anyway, so you, you can see how all these colors are getting darker and they just, you know, become denser, we can beefier, um, come nicer to my taste. But you know, this is another tool and I'm giving it for free. So if you don't like it, don't use it. I suggest download it, try it, play with it. And if you like it, keep it. And if you don't like it at all, just delete it. And if you, if you think this is too much, and if you think that saturation here is too much, I suggest and you watch my saturation video. Um, but as a, as a shortcut, use the saturation in the HDR palette, which will make things, you know, that stupid. But let's put it here. So it's making things saturated and it's making things a little bit deeper. Cool. So now let me show you, let's go onto the charts. I have two charts. Um, this one, which is quite nice to exemplify a few things. Uh, let me show you the density slider where it does, uh, here, pay attention to the vector scope. I'm going to put it here, fairly, fairly big. Um, so see how, as I push this slider, how these scores are getting beefier. Yes, darker, but you know, I don't know. It's just, they, they look really nice. Just the colors. And you can see what it's doing in this um, vector scope 
when I say, you know, beef here. You know, this is just a straight one single line and how, you know, this is getting more complex. Um, really nice. And then, yeah, you can start, you know, pushing this, see how what it does to your image, um, how, you know, these reds are sort of getting unified up to a point and, you know, to the left, um, this red is becoming a bit thinner as well. So, you know, these, you know, di different movements will create different, um, different looks, different densities, different sat saturation levels and, and, you know, how the colors interact with each other. So I'm, I'm leaving it like that. I'm going to explain these two other sliders, which, which are great. These are really good. So the so self-explanatory low saturation limiter, we, we can see that this lower part of the image, which is the darkest part of the image in the middle are the most saturated and this which is um, brighter are less saturated um, so this low saturation image is going to start reducing the density of the least saturated parts of your image and you can see here with you know with straight line what it's doing is, is reducing the density in the l least saturated parts of your image and the sort of opposite the low luma limiter so the darkest um, part of your image is gonna uh, sort of reduce the density and, and see what, what it's doing um, to, to, the in, yeah, to the image here. It's starting to look a bit more psychedelic, <laughs> a bit cool. Cool, so we have this Macbeth chart and when I mentioned that these sliders work more or less like the three by three matrix that in DaVinci Resolve is called RGB mixer. Yeah, three by three matrix. It's not exactly the same, but sort of. I'm going to exemplify it with this other example, which is a different method of density and saturation. Um, so yeah, I'm going to apply the density. And then, you know, you start moving a bit more dense to the red, a bit more green. Well, you can see if the vector scope is not that I'm, go back, it's not that I'm pushing the reds and only, you know, this area moves. The yellows, the green, yeah, you know, everything moves in a certain direction. Um, so that that's why it's, it's sort of a three by three matrix where it's not um, just by individual channel. It's affecting the other three values as you move them. And I I created this so I can show you another. This is density CMY. Um, let me enable it. Um, method. Um, it looks quite complex, but don't worry about it. Um, the only thing that this is all for us to change the weight of these three colors again, which is the red, the green, and blue, just as we have in this in the DCTL. So you see how it's not only the red; it's all these other colors that are being changed. Starts with the with the primary color that you're choosing, but then affects the rest. So it's a bit of um, cross talk between these other colors and until you find your desired output yeah I just made the red black um, so you know like this is mad you know this is red it's complete let me let me come out of it it's just a completely different and hue twist and, and it's as clean as you can get because you know there's nothing cleaner th than a matrix so you know i'm just pushing hard these colors and this this yeah this zero noise amazing uh, anyway that also was going to exemplify when i was saying talking about the three sliders of the density working more or less like a three by three matrix. Um, but yeah, let, let's, let me show you one more thing and I promise I'll let you go. But let me show you this cool other thing, which did, uh, let's go, let's go back to this image because of the reds. Yeah. So I wanted to bring, I, I have this reference still. So I have tons and tons of films that I use as me and my clients, but mostly me, I use as reference. Oh, hello. This is my friend, uh, Wes Anderson. Um, so yeah, I, I use them as reference for us to, <laughs> uh, I just saw a nice, uh, oh, look at this. This is quite deep orange. Uh, let's use the vector scope there. This is quite complex, deep orange. 
dear Wes Anderson. Now, but I was going to show you something short in film um, in 1999, I think. I can't remember what stock was used. Um, this is a Pedro Almodovar um, film all about my mother. Todo sobre mi madre um, in Spanish. Just just to show this, this very rich, dark um, reds that... That uh, just yeah, very very inherited, of uh, destructive um, met method of saturation. You know, just, they're so dense. They're, they're just just beautiful. In this case, I um, um, I, I don't know if I show. It's not a trick. It's just an option here in DaVinci. But you just select the the reference sizing. This is the the reference, and we can do panning and zooming. In this case, I just want to move it a little bit this way. So we can compare red to red, um, but you know we can we can go zoom so it's a bit yeah and just next to each other tilt so it's just there. Um, and with the color picker, you can here sort of I, oops identify you know the values of the red. I, th I think my red in my image is a bit more towards the orange, you know, towards the yellows if you will, um, and I need to move that hue more towards the magenta in this case and i'm gonna show you i use well i use many methods i'm not sponsored by any of these brands but i use mono nodes and i use pixel tools in this case pixel tools oh, i have already enabled it so yeah so i'm just mo moving the hue of of this particular uh, vector red let's see if it's yeah just all the reds in the image um so just you know, slightly change a few, and it's getting me closer to the reds of this film. Now I want to, yeah, as I said, I want to show blonde. Blonde, wow, man, I just oh. So this will carry on through other project. So come back here and just reset, and that's it. This is the original aspect aspect ratio of the frame. Uh, yeah, just because it goes through a lot of different. Um, wow, look at those. It's just, I mean, the photography is unreal. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, you go, you go through a lot of different looks um, of the age. I mean, the, the softness of this, of the light and, and this, you know, hard, hard light, you know, that emulates that period, you know, with the flash in your face and everything behind goes to deep black. Um, the, the use of, you know, like really vintage, uh, sweetly bokeh lenses. Um, I don't know. I just love it. You know, look at that, those those filmic reds, but especially this one. Look at the look at the depth of this red. It's, it's it is incredible, um, but very characteristic. Oops, very characteristic of the era. Look, I mean, we are miles away from from with that. Wow, I mean. It is deep. It is so deep that in this case, with the exposure that I have, is is quite not working. But maybe in the door, you know, with, with my door here, it's working quite well. Maybe I am pushing it too far. Maybe there. Um, so again, so this is a free tutorial to add density to your color. Um, please check it out. Download it from my shop. And if you'd like to take your films the notch above, please check out my other products and that I have a few. I have a few free and I have a few paid for. Really cheap. I'm not, you know, that my most, most expensive is 20 quid, $20, which is a pack of however many, I don't know, 30 plus density filters that are superb. I'm actually, I'm actually going to show you one da, 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 da. here. Uh, I think I got the, yeah. Let's see what we're doing to the lights. Just to highlight. Not to the whole image in this in this case, in this filter. Um, really nice. Which one is it? Oh, the smoke. It's just one eighth, but you know, let's go one half. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, it looks, I don't know, I really like it. I really like, you know, blooming highlights and just using the, just using diffusion filters um, of any sort in front of a digital camera. Like it makes everything looks a bit more organic. Um, it softens, you know, the skins, it softens the, the highlights. Um, this plus a bit of highlight compression, mommy. Highlight compression, uh, density in the colors, tiny bit of grain, halation. Um, 
and I'm sort of selling all my products because it's all here for you to, you know, my fix now true it comes with all these goodies and it's only a fiver. And it comes with halation, high roll off, which is compression. This is an overall glow grain, which is half, however many, like three, four different packs of grain, you know, with sharpening, softening, four different types of uh, grain. I always like using the grain film. Um, you know, it's really, really subtle, but it just does some magic, adds some magic to it. Um, unfortunately, it needs a bit of cache or a faster computer than the one I have, but it just renders an amazing image. I don't think you can see it in YouTube, um, but trust me, it looks amazing. Um, and what what's better to go and get it for you to try on your project? And happy days. Okay, so thank you very much for staying until the end. And I hope you really enjoy this video as I enjoy making them when I have time. Um, yeah, happy color grading. Bye.